I'm not going to lie, people want loops. You can make a, a two and a half to three minute beat, like a 16 bar melody loop with chords and whatever over the top and just change something very subtle to make a chorus and just repeat that over. And people will actually appreciate that a lot more than you trying to overdo a beat. Peace, what's going down? It's DJ Payne One for BeatStars.com, interviewing a man who's uh has a has a dope story because he's seeing his ascent right now we're, we're actually having a conversation with him as the ascent is still happening um his name is gc beats appreciate your time how are, how are you feeling sir i'm doing good thank you for having me guys and you're traveling right now right yeah we're currently in turkey um on holiday okay so not music related do you have a, a studio a, a mobile studio set up there in turkey uh, not at the moment. I've decided to leave work way back home. So you, you're good at separating work and, and leisure then? I try to. I mean, my, my girlfriend's on my case all the time about it. But uh, even now, I'm still checking emails like all the time on my phone. So, uh, But I know how to wind down and you know get it out of my head when I need to. I was hoping you could give me and maybe some other viewers some advice about that balance, especially with regard to relationships. Because like you said, your, your, your girlfriend is mm. probably not happy when you're at an art museum and you get a sales notification or something you got to check yeah and... exactly Th things like that do happen but i um yeah it, it takes a toll on sort of the relationships back um back home you know when i'm at the dinner table or whatever with my family and i'm just checking on emails or i'm replying to, uh, to a customer and yeah it's just it's it's best if you just leave that stuff to you know your normal work hours and just make sure that you take the time to wind down when you need to I feel like that's advice just for me. Yeah. All right, uh, so getting things started, uh, how long have you been making beats? Uh, I've been doing this since um, circa 2008. Okay, so that's a, that's a fair amount. That's about 12, 13 years. Mm. I mean, I was only a kid back then. Um, uh, in high school, I was just messing about with, I think it was FL Studio 9. I, I don't even know, but um, yeah, I was just dabbling about on the, on the DAW, so nothing too serious. Got it. What are some of your favorite VSTs? Uh, favorite VSTs, the, it's got to be Serum right now. It's a big one for me in terms of a synth. I thought you might say that after listening to a bunch of your tracks. Yeah. Sorry, these notifications are coming up. Um, then, oh, see, so you're uh, doing I, it right I, now. you gotta, you got to find a balance. There we go. The BeatStars <laughs> YouTube notifications just coming up. Can't get out of work. Um, but uh, it, I, I'm really into my organic sounds. So... Um, uh, on the sphere for some like cool stuff and um, definitely trillion for electric and acoustic bass mm. and then um, contact for some more of the organic you know like horns brass things like that so I, I checked your youtube page your oldest youtube upload was from a year ago is that when you started uploading beats to youtube just a year i think it was back in 2017 i put my first video down um i had no clue what i was doing you know i, I don't think even think i was ready to put beats down uh, to put beats up on YouTube, but I just did it anyway. And uh, back then, I started doing um, K-pop type beats or Korean type beats, and that's where it all started. Uh, and I want to talk about that, but why'd you wait so long to, to start putting beats uh, online? Uh, that's a good question, actually. I, I guess I didn't know about this whole um, selling beats and instrumentals thing online until I saw um, what happened on BeatStars. And I actually went data back to the sound click days where I've seen um, you know, all these producers on the uh, top selling charts and uh, I thought, you know, what's going on here? I had no idea what, what it was all about. And then um, that sort of stopped for a while and then I got on with life, went back into producing and then um, found Beat Stars and that's when I started putting my content up online. So I know a lot has happened for you within the last 10 months. Positive things, um, a lot of growth. Uh, with regards to sales, growth with numbers, when did you start within the last year? When when did you actually start making a, a living off of putting your beats online? I, I started seeing some small results in 2018. I'd say mid 2018, just when I was getting into a new job at um at a bank. So after my day shifts, my day job, I would come home. You know, I get my next upload onto YouTube and BeatStars or whatever. And then um, started seeing some sales at the end of every month. It wasn't until December 18 uh, that I actually quit my day job 
and decided to go all in. Uh, thinking back at the time, it probably wasn't the best idea, but you know, I had that mentality where I had to give something a try, especially if I've not given it a go before, and um, I just really put my all into it. And that's when the results came. The ends did justify the means. You're still you're still making a living solely off of beats. Solely off of beats. Okay. No, it's funny that you said it wasn't a great idea necessarily, but you did it and it and it worked out. Because I think nobody yeah. feels like it's a good idea. Well, virtually nobody feels like it's a good idea to quit a job. At the moment that you decide to sort of hand in your notice at um at your day job, that's when you think it probably isn't a good idea. Sure. Um, but um, I mean, I, I've supported parents. Coming from an Asian background, they're not as strict as you think they would be, but they were actually quite supportive and they say, um, you know, you do what you need to do, get out there. And um, I naturally have quite a high level of anxiety as a person. So um, for me, it didn't, it, it wasn't really, uh, it didn't go really well for me at the time. But then, you know, I got distracted with the process of making music, of, you know, doing the beats that I nearly forgot about all of that anxiety and, you know, luckily, it kind of worked out well enough for me. What advice would you give to someone who's in that position where they just quit their job and they're they're trying to to make sense of of their whole business model? What what kind of daily habits should they form? What kind of structure worked for you? Um, well, there's the obvious, such as um, you might need a plan B. You know, you might, in case it doesn't work out and you do actually have to apply for, um, you know, your next job, be prepared for that mentally uh, and financially and make sure you have that kind of support, um, uh, you know, with your savings or whatever. Um, but also just be prepared to put the grind and the work in because not, nothing comes for free and nothing nothing's easy unless you put, you know, the work that you need to do into it. So how did you structure your day around being a, a full-time producer, you know, day one? Uh, it's funny you mentioned this, and uh, I've had conversations with my producer friends about this, but I do procrastinate a lot, which isn't good. Um, but luckily, I'm also quite disciplined. So, um, I, you know, I get up in the morning about 7, 8 a.m. And then uh, start on either start on a new idea or finish one that I had made you know the previous night and keep on doing that until you know the end of the working day whether that's like 5 or 6 p.m and stop when you know when it's time for me to just relax I just stop I, I, I basically I treat it as a normal working day as I would and I hate to use the term nine to five but that that's that that period of the day is where I'm the most active and you know that's it's worked out for me in terms of getting the routine going every day. Back to your, your K-pop uh, comment. A year ago, you were targeting a lot of rappers like Sit K and Jay Park, a lot of, a lot of Korean <laughs> rappers. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I have an artist that's signed to hire, so shout out to Ted Park. So I'm, I'm familiar with all those uh, guys. Yeah. That's how I found out about you, actually. Oh, right. I was yeah. like, he was making these beats and, you know, DJ Payne one. That's pretty cool. Well, we got to work on something for Ted Park together. Um, for sure. But... Suddenly, you stop targeting K rap and you kind of move towards more uh, American artists. Well, why, why the shift? It was, it was less to do with what everyone else is doing and more with what I wanted. So, I got really tired of, um, I, I got tired of making K pop beats. And, um, for me, the, the K pop sound is very, it's very complex and you, you have to put a lot more thought. It's not me being lazy, it's just that I, you know, I've been listening to more American music lately and I've been more in tune with it, um, both from uh, the artist side and also the production side. So for me, uh, you know, I naturally gravitated towards American beats and instrumentals rather than, you know, the K-pop thing. Got it. Uh, another change I noticed with your YouTube page is that your visualizers changed quite a bit. Mm. And a lot of producers ask me about you know, how they're visually presenting their beats on YouTube and, and what the best uh, practices are for that. You've, you've tried a lot of different looks. Um, yeah. Have you noticed a connection between the kind of visualizer you, visualizers you mm. used and how many views you got, how many sales you got? 
Um, I have actually, and um, I get asked this quite a lot. And I think the common theme is keeping it simple is actually more, it, it does more for you than trying to add a lot of these sort of effects and uh, these visual effects and these um, sort of, if, if, if there's a lot going on in the background, then it might deter people away from listening to your beats down. I mean, that's, that's, that's what I find. You, you see sort of the videos that I have recently, this very simple thumbnail, and I find that's been working in, in terms of like a click-through rate. And I've been getting more listeners and more views that way. So yeah, it does definitely help. Simplicity, that is. So let's talk about a successful beat. So you had a beat go viral and hit over a million views. That's the uh, Chance the Rapper featuring Sumino and I'm an A-type beat. And what's crazy is I checked your, I spied on your keywords and you're ranking on keywords for not only Chance the Rapper, but also for, for uh, the other three artists named. Um, and it went viral before you even had 10,000 subscribers, I believe. Why would you, why do you think this beat was so successful for you? The idea I had in my head, uh, as, as soon as I heard that idea, I already knew, you know, this could be quite big um, because... I knew I wanted it to be simple enough for artists, you know, to give that head enough headroom for the artist to rap or sing over or whatever. And I thought uh, when I finished the beat, it was just structured, structured in a way that's perfect for them to get uh, a song together and simple enough for them to, sort, um, you know, write their lyrics over. So um, I think that's the, the structure of the beat as largely contributed to you know its success on beat stars what is what's your advice for structuring beats well first of all if you're going to make a beat i would start from the chorus or the hook itself uh, because that's got the most elements in and then uh, dissect that and build uh, the verse and intro around that and then you can um repeat that across all of your beats and then you'll probably be you'll, you'll, you'll see people write to them more and engage with that more rather than trying to um, make a, I don't know how to explain, just basically keep the structure simple enough for people to write over and not to do too much to it. So would you draw a parallel between the visualizer and the beat in the sense that the, the simple and, and highly structured beats, I should say clearly structured beats, sell well just the same as you get higher click-through rates and engagement with yeah. a simpler visualizer. And again, I've had this conversation with my producer friends and we've, we've noticed that um, pe people want loops. I'm not going to lie, people want loops. And so you can make a, a two and a half to three minute beat that's going to be a loop, like a 16 bar melody loop with chords and whatever over the top and just change something very subtle in the uh, to make a chorus and just repeat that over. And people will actually appreciate that a lot more uh, that a lot more than you trying to over overdo a beat because it's already laid out very simply for them all they have to do is write the lyrics and put you know make a song out of it i almost feel that that's more challenging than overproducing a record because it's easy to just add layers and keep adding more and keep adding more but it's really difficult yeah. to just get a good four bar top line that's so mm. catchy and so effective that 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 drives the entire beat and that inspires the artist to write and i think in 2019 um that's that's what makes a good instrumental a good beat if it's simple enough if, if the artist themselves can make the ch if you can hear the change from a verse to a chorus from the artist themselves because the beat is that simple then that's that's what's you know that's what's going to make a good song and then it's probably what, what artists are going to gravitate towards and, and um, buy a license for. Have you ever yeah. run any kind of YouTube ads on your beat videos or have you tried any other you know, paid advertising through Instagram, Facebook, etc.? Uh, I'm pretty familiar with how Instagram ads and uh, Facebook and YouTube ads work. So it's like, um, what's it called? Google, Google ads. Um, but I've never used them, ever. Um, and there's no particular reason. I've just, I haven't felt the need to use them. So would you say most of your sales are coming from your YouTube channel at this point? At this point, I think it's a mixture of the uh, YouTube and the BeatStars marketplace. What about BeatStars has made you stick with it for this this, this whole year? Um, 
it, it's got to be simplicity, you know. Um, but the fact that BeatStars, you have an option to uh, go with a free membership and also go for the pro page, which is obviously um, something that producers should opt for and that everything is set out and laid out for you already, uh, that's, that's the big sort of selling point for me with BeatStars. It's just a very simple platform to use and everything's done, like kind of automated for you. And you, you said too that you're actually getting a lot of sales just by people searching internally on BeatStars now? Yeah. And you're yeah. tracking that all through through the BeatStars uh, analytics? I can see, yeah. As you know, you can see sort of uh, which beats have been selling the most, the volume sold and uh, how much revenue they generated. So what what kind of strategies do you use to uh, get views to your marketplace on BeatStars and to your YouTube channel in terms of keywords, in terms of how you title your beats? Well, I'd say with, with the keyword thing, uh, I'd say you'd want to pick keywords that are is it low, comp l low competition, but also searched often. And that's obviously that's that's very difficult, but they are out there. And um, I think if you do that consistently enough, uh, for example, if I said, you know, because I've been making a lot of chance the rapper type beats recently, I think that's one of my stronger keywords. If you can build on that consistently with uh, a lot of um, chance the rapper type beats, for example, then people will pick up on that, and then you're going to rank high, um, rank higher for that s a certain keyword. And then rinse and repeat with other artists and other keywords, and then all of a sudden, you've got this huge sort of um, catalog on YouTube that's driving views in for you, and then that's going to, you know, repeat itself over and over again, and you're going to get more sales that way. So you would disagree with the statement that licensing beats on YouTube is dead. I, I completely disagree with that, yeah. And not even just YouTube. People just say, you know, licensing beats is dead full stop. It just isn't. With the way the internet is now, it just isn't dead. That was a trick question. The, the language you were using to describe the keywords, you know, low t competition, high search volume, something that you use, you know, like a vidIQ or a TubeBuddy to, to analyze? I use TubeBuddy from time to time. It's more like I choose to make the music that I want to, and then I attribute that music to an artist that I want. So I just, I just go for it. I, I just, I pick an artist and I stick with it. I don't do much research on keywords. I should really, because it'll probably help me. But um, I just let it run its course and see what happens. Hope for the best. I checked your social media. I checked your Instagram page. You don't post very often on no. Instagram. You only have five photos on Instagram. What's yeah. What's the, uh, the, the, the strategy behind that? Firstly, uh, that's, that's down to laziness. So I <laughs> to be honest, I, re I, I really should post more. With Instagram, actually, um, I, I, I want to keep it as more of a, of a personal thing. So I know I don't have many posts or anything for people to engage with on there, but um, my behind, my DM is actually blown up. Like people are like, messaging me every day and stuff. And I, I want to keep it that way for now. And... Um, in the future, I might be putting beat videos on, on there, you know, just to drive a bit of traffic to my website. But um, I, want, I want to keep that uh, Instagram uh, as more of a personal sort of messaging. People who want to contact you directly, DM you on Instagram. Um, what's, what's the username? Uh, that's going to be at gc.beats. gc.beats. And then where do they find the beats as well? Where's the beat store? Um, so I've got a, a link tree link in my Instagram profile and the beat store uh, domain name is uh, www.gcbeats.net. All right, GC Beats, we appreciate your time. Uh, much continued success uh, to you. We're going to have to check in. Thank you. Uh, once you once you reach the next milestone, uh, probably, probably 100,000 subscribers. I think that's coming soon. Sure thing. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, enjoy your vacation. Sorry for interrupting you. I apologize to your girlfriend as no, well. That's cool. <laughs> Thanks, man.